hey guys let's talk about another question today and the question number is 331 and the title says verify pre-order serialization of a binary tree now this question says that you have been given a string uh, version of a binary tree uh, which is a pre-order traversal and you have to verify whether it's a correct traversal or it's a invalid traversal now in order to solve this question i first thought maybe i can use backtracking or recursion but then I realized that maybe a stack is a good good way of solving this question. Now I'm going to share my own technique of solving this question using a stack. And then later in the video, I will also discuss the official solution presented in this, uh, on this platform. Now, in order to solve this question, how can we utilize stack? Let's look at that. So let's take the example given in the question. Uh, it's uh, it simply is 934.126 and this is the in order traversal. And this is the indices of each value or each node. Now, how we solve this question using stack, let's take a stack. Now the basic algorithm follows like this, that whenever you find a number add it to stack if it is a hash value then you have to check whether the top of the stack is hash or not if top of the stack is hash then you can pull out two values from the stack pull one pull two this means uh, pulling first value and then pulling second value. And you can keep doing this until you find that the top value is not hash anymore. And then you can simply push this hash into the stack. Had it at your stack. Now, just, just like, let's try to run this algorithm on this example. And you will see how what I'm trying to say. So what we do is we see that first value is a number on zeroth index. We add it to stack nine. Now the second value or the index one is three, which is a number. We add it to stack. Then index two has value four. We add it to stack. And then index three or the fourth value or the fourth node is a hash but the top value is not a hash so we simply add it to the stack now at the fourth indice we see another hash value we are here now we see another hash value and when we see this hash value we see what is the top value on the stack now the top value is also a hash so we need to pull out two values now the first value we pull out is hash. So we pull this out. And then the second value, we also check while pulling out whether the second value is a number or not. If it's a number, then only we pull this out. Now we pull this number out and the top value moves here. Now, as you can see, the top now becomes a number, not a hash. So we stop and we add the current fourth indice or the hash to the stack so we add hash over here and the top becomes this new hash and we move to the indice position number six now it's a hash value but the top is again no so we move to number five not six so now the five, fifth value or the fifth index is index position we have value one so we put it into the stack. Now again, we move to sixth index position and we see a hash value, but the top is, and the top here is one, but the top is not a hash value. So we just add it to the stack. Now we move to position number seven and we see a hash value again. Now the seventh index position has hash value and the top of the stack is also a hash. 
So what we do is we can pull two values out. So we pull out first hash value and then while pulling the second value out, we check if it's a number or not. If it's a number, we just pull it out. So we pull this out and now the top value moves to hash. Now, as I said, while pulling two values out at one time, you also you keep doing that until and unless you find that the top value is not anymore a hash value. So now again, while pulling the two values out, we see that there is another hash. So we again pull out two values. So we pull these two out and we move here. Now you can see that the top value is not hash anymore. So we stop and we put the current hash into the stack. So we put hash over here. We change the top to this and we move to position index eight. Now before moving forward, let me let me tell you what happened right now. So we were able to clear this portion of the string. What does this mean that so let's say this is the example. This means that we were able to replace this entire left subtree with a hash or we were able to process this entire left sub subtree while iterating over the string. So this is how we were able to replace this left sub left substring or the left subtree and we replaced it with a hash and we put that hash value over here in the stack. Now let's move to index eight. We, we see that it's a number, we just add it to the stack. We move the top value to this. Now we move from eight to nine. Nine is a hash, we simply add it because the top value is not a hash. Now we see number six. If it's a number, we just simply add it to the stack. So we just add it. Top is changed. Now we move to index 11 and we see it's a hash. But the top value is still not a hash. So we simply add it. Remove this. Now when you move to index position 12, we see that it's a hash and the top value of the stack is again a hash. So we, we pull two values out and we see then there is a, another hash. So we pull another two values out. Then we see there's another hash. So we pull another two values out and then we put this hash or the 12th index hash into the stack, which simply means that we were able to completely process the tree and replace it with a hash. So in this way, we were able to completely, completely replace the entire tree with a hash or we were able to completely process the tree. And this is a value traversal. So the condition for value traversal is that if at the end of entire processing, value traversal means that at the end of the processing, only hash remains in the stack. Now this is a simple technique using stack to solve this question and to verify that the pre-order traversal is valid, valid or not. Now let's talk about official solution on read code. Now the technique using official, official solution uh, basically uses slots and we start initially with one, with one slot. So with one slot, we means that we can capture root and for each node we process, we check if it's a number or if it's a hash. Now, if it's a number, we add plus two to the slots. So if it's a number plus two for the sl slots, and the reason for that is for each number, we can have two more children and they will occupy, they, they will provide two more slots. So when we, when we process a node, we reduce one slot, we consume one slot. And if it's a number, we add two more. So for example, in case of this, in case of this example, what we do is we start with nine, 
We consume one slot, but it's a number, we add two more, plus two. Now add three, we consume one more slot, but it's a number, we add two more slots. Add four, it's a number, we add two more slots. Now it's a hash, we get minus one, minus one, because we consumed it. And then on this side, because it's a number, we consume this and then we add two more slots. We consume this, we consume this. And then here, consume one slot for this two and add two more because it's a number. Now it's a hash, consume one. It's a number, consume one, but add two slots. Now we simply reduce one for this, one for this. And now if you total this, we see that one, two, three, four, five, six, six twos, which is 12, plus initial value of one means total 13. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 minus is equals to zero. So this means that we were able to consume all the slots which were generated during the processing and the initial one and we are left with zero available slots that means it's a valid pre-order traversal so this is how uh, uh, the technique which is uh, given on the lead code official solution solve this question and it's a pretty good pretty good technique because it's also runs uh, in an order of n time complexity and order of one space complexity now let's look at the code and I will discuss all of this in more detail. So this is my latest submission in solving this question. I'm gonna show you first my technique to solve this question. And I will show you how I try to optimize the technique in terms of space complexity and in minor time complexity. And then I will show you the official solution, how they use that. So initially I just took a simple stack with string I split it using the comma and if it's a hash value for each token I process in the list. So basically this list will have something like 9 comma 3 comma 4 comma hash something like this. Let's just pull this from here. Of course if I can copy. Yep. So this will be something like this. <clears throat> now here each token will basically be the each, the each node we process like 9, 3, 4 or hash. So if it's a hash, what we do is we check whether while stack is has greater than two value or it's just empty, it doesn't really matter. What we are trying to say is that we pull out two values at once and we just pull out first value as because it's a hash value. We already checked it using peak. And then for the second value, we check if it's a hash or not if it's a number we pull it out otherwise we just skip it and this is basically used to pass a some test cases in this to verify it's a uh, pre-order traversal or not after that we simply add the token so this is the same technique which i discussed in the on the notepad and this will uh, this is an order of n time complexity uh, this operation take order of n time and this also take order of n but because of some uh, string matching it can take more time than usual but it the, the algorithm is order of n now in order to um, optimize this especially the string matching part i basically created a small token class this token class says that whether it's a number or not and then i use the same stack approach and i just added some more code to reduce some of the time complexity because of the string matching and I reduce uh, that uh, time complexity by adding some of the, the class code and all that thing and made it a bit faster. The space complexi complexity is still uh, order of n. And in this particular case, the order of n is because of the split I did. In this particular case, the time complexity is order of n, 